ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of allah wa khayru al hadi hadi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al umur muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kull wa kull muhdathatin bid'ah and every thing we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kull bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kull dalalatin fil nar every going astray every misguidance it's in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam as we continue to reflect knowing that we are on the doorsteps of the month of ramadan may allah allow us to see it and we prepare for what's to come We must question ourselves with what is our priority in life? Is our priority this dunya or is our priority Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And without a doubt, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be our priority, should be our top concern, pleasing Him and doing as He commanded. So many of us, we spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of sacrifice and chasing when it, when it comes to this dunya, chasing the dunya. chasing money chasing love chasing that dream job chasing status and these things but all of those things when they really come down to it you know they only give you temporary or a false happiness usually one's thinking is that when i have those things then i will go and do such and such good things or then i can have a bigger car or a bigger house or higher worldly status a better life and we know that the opposite is quite true but we're warned about this in the quran when allah he says alhaakum at-takathur hatta zurtum al-maqabir when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says the competition the rivalry in worldly increase for you to have worldly increase in your in your means it diverts you and distracts you from the remembrance of allah until you come to the graves and this is why the graves death is يعني what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us to frequently remember اكثروا ذكر هذا من اللذات الموت frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures because it is death so until then most of us were distracted by the good of this life or the, the desires of this life until we reach that moment where we cannot return allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said انما اموالكم واولادكم فتنه والله عنده اجر عظيم Allah said what means your wealth and your children they are a trial for you they are a test for you a test and a trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah has with him a great reward so fear Allah before you even think of fearing anything on this life everything anything else in this life did you ever think of the results of chasing the dunya of making it more important than the akhira of chasing just what you want to chase here and then the akhira your next life how you will meet allah your deeds being weighed you're crossing the sirat over jahannam the bridge over jahannam whether you go to jannah or jahannam to heaven or to hell all this is in the back of your mind it's not at the forefront of your mind 
So did you ever think of the results of chasing this dunya? Allah said, He said, Allah says what means it will be on that day that they see it. The day that that day of resurrection is a reality to you. And you see the people standing on flat plains with no shade except Allah's shade. And the sun overhead. And the people sweating up to their ankles or their, their shins or their knees or their hips or their collarbones, their necks. Out of fear of that day. Only then will it become a reality. It will be on that day that they see that day as though they had not remained in the world except for an afternoon or a morning. That's the value of this dunya. We strive so hard to live the good, what? Some people it's one day, one week, one month. Some people it's 80, 90, 100 years. What? 109 years. This is what maybe the oldest person in the world right now may be. Yeah, I mean, this is what we're striving for. These few days on this earth where I'm, on the day of resurrection, on the day of judgment, this yeah, I mean, life here, however long, it will feel like it was only an afternoon's amount of time. Allah says, إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا Allah says what means if you do good, then you do good for your own selves. It will benefit you. You will be the one who reaps that reward. And if you do other than that, if you do evil, then you're doing it to yourselves and against your own selves. This is the justice with which Allah He established the heavens and the earth. So the lavish homes and the lavish cars, the fancy vacations and the fancy weddings, the ritzy clothes and the shoes and the, the jewelry and the likes of all of these things. Whereas, yani seeking some of this, as long as it's halal is of course okay. But this pursuit to have all this stuff, it's just a temporary worldly fix. If you think that's what's going to buy you happiness, you're fooling yourself. They do not get buried with you. You leave with just three white sheets wrapped around your body, your skin and whatever is inside of it at that time. But dedicating your time and your effort into something that lasts for an eternity makes more sense. Doesn't it? Even a little kid, if you tell them, if you can have this you know, toy or whatever forever versus one minute, they'll pick the forever. If you tell them one million versus one hundred, they'll pick one million. So if a child gets the value of, of quantity, of time, then, then how can we be so foolish to ignore it? On the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, or radiallahu anhuma, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبَ وَعَابِرُ السَّبِيلِ I'm telling you, if we just live by this hadith, if this every day you read this hadith, in the morning, in the middle of your day, in the evening, you would already be on your path to Jannah. He said, Kun fi dunya Live in this life, live in this life as if you are a stranger. Or a, a traveler who's passing by a town. Why? Because the stranger, he is never comfortable where he is until he knows Yani, he's in his home, and our home that we're seeking is not in Mantika or Lathrop or Medessa or whatever. Our home's in Jannah bi idnillahi ta'ala. That's what we should be focusing on. So the stranger is always cautious of his or her environment, not wanting to fall into sin, not wanting to disobey Allah. And the Abr al-Sabir, the traveler who's passing by, he's got what he needs to just get by. He's never getting settled. He's staying for a pit stop in one area, one location, until he reaches his final destination and then he can relax. This is how we should be living this life. Yet many of us are living this life as if this is the only life to live. And we know that there's a second life the re after the resurrection that we will either go to Jannah or Jahannam. And that will be eternity. Yani, if it's in Jannah, if it's in Jahannam, inshallah, from the Muslims, they will do some time and Allah can take them out. But Ibn Umar, he continued, he said in that narration, he continued from himself, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْطَذِرِ الصَّبَاحِ وَذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْطَذِرِ الْمَسَاءِ وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَدِكَ وَمِنْ حَيَاتِكَ لَمَوْتِكَ He said, and this hadith is in Bukhari, Ibn Umar رضي الله عنه, he said, if you're alive in the evening, don't expect to be living till the morning. And if you're alive in the morning, don't expect to be living till the evening. And take from your health before your illness and take for your life before your death. Look at these words of advice. <clears throat> to live always not knowing that you'll have another chance to do some good in the path of Allah. 
living every second as if you don't have the next second guaranteed. Taking advantage of your health when you have it before you're ill. Taking advantage in your life to please Allah before death comes to you and you can't return. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, have you ever stopped for a minute to consider building yourself a house in Jannah? We build our homes here. We build them and we, we put all our effort and energy and struggle and sweat into building homes here. What about in Jannah? We're talking about prioritizing Allah above this dunya. عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من ثابر على اثنة عشرة ركعة من السنة بنى الله له بيتا في الجنة أربع ركعات قبل الظهر وركعتين بعد الظهر وركعتين بعد المغرب وركعتين بعد العشاء وركعتين قبل الفجر This hadith which is حسن in the sunnah of al-Tirmidhi the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said Whoever is regular with the 12 regular sunnah prayers, Allah will build for him or her a house in paradise. So who's preparing for that next life? Who's preparing for their home, their residence in the afterlife, after this world is all done with? Because we know every soul will taste death. Because Allah's Messenger he said 12 regular rakahs of sunnah, the four before dhuhr, the two after dhuhr, the two after maghrib, the two after isha, the two before fajr, this equals 12 you're building yourself a house in Jannah if you're regular with them, if you're constant with them. Yet our worries, our anxieties, they dominate our lives over worldly, actually non-important things. Half the time we're so worried and anxious and we put so much effort into some things that have no value and no importance. So much so that many of us have even missed fard prayers because of it. So we'll miss obligatory prayers because of a test or because of a game, or because of some entertainment, or because of some competition, or because of something that we're seeking, money in this life, you'll miss a fard prayer. A whole prayer will pass upon you. This is the way we have chosen to live our lives. We'll miss opportunities for sadaqah, to help out in the way of Allah. You're not doing this for those people, you're doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have forgotten our appointment with Malik al Maut. We have forgotten that we all have an appointment with the angel of death. We just don't know that date and that time. We have forgotten our meeting with Allah. So what will be the result? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, أَخْطَرَبَ لِلنَّاسِ حِسَابُهُمْ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مُعْرِدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means drawing near for mankind is their reckoning. The Prophet ﷺ in his life, He said, بِعِثْتُ أَنَا وَالسَّاعَ هَكَذَا he said, I was sent in relation to the hour, to the day of judgment, like this, and his two fingers were close by each other. 1400 some years ago, what about now then? We're even closer and closer to that day, that reckoning. So Allah said, draws nearer to mankind, their reckoning with Him, while they turn away in heedlessness. You're acting as if it ain't coming. You're acting as if you know you've got time to do what Allah needs. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اقتربت الساعة ولا تزداد الناس على الدنيا إلا حرصا ولا تزداد ولا تزداد منهم إلا بعدا. This hadith, which is in the collection of Ibn Abi Dunya and Sheikh Al Albani, he authenticated it. Him Allah, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم has said that the hour has drawn near, but mankind, listen, this was the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying this 1400 some years ago. The hour has drawn near, but mankind's desire for the worldly life is only increasing. Mankind's desire to just have your Jannah on this earth that we know that it's called earth. This is what we are focusing on. This is where we, we, we put our energy. And they are only becoming more distant from Allah. Anyone who has a sense of brain will see that this is the way humanity is going. Mankind's desire for this worldly life is only increasing and they're only becoming more distant from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said, وَقِيلَ الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ كَمَا نَسِيتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا وَمَا وَمَأْوَاكُمُ النَّارِ وَمَا لَكُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says what means this day we will forget you on the day of resurrection. The day where we need Allah. We need His shade. We need His forgiveness. We need His mercy. We need Allah to be there to support us and get us through that 50,000 year long day. But Allah will say, this is the day that we're going to forget you because you used to forget us. This day we will forget you because you forgot this meeting 
of us on this day, on this last day, this day of resurrection, and your abode is the fire, and there's none to help you. Ikhwani wa khwati fillah, we have the opportunity for high stations in Jannah to meet the Prophet whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger there is your prescription there is your, your, your recipe there is your direction whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger Allah says whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger then they will be from those whom Allah will bestow His grace upon them. From them, the prophets. You can be in the company of all the anbiya. The siddiqeen, the first to believe the truthful ones. The shuhada, the martyrs. والصالحين, the, 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 the righteous ones. What excellent companions these are. This could be your abode. You have the opportunity. Yes, you, me, all of us who are in this little city, this drop of earth in the large scale of the earth can be with the best that Allah ever sent to this earth by just doing what is commanded of us. To meet the blessed companions and most of all, to see the face of Allah. Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the face of our Creator, where He will reveal it on a day when you think that everything has been given to you in Jannah and there ain't nothing more you can get. And He will call out, Salamun alaykum. He will say, peace be upon to you. And the inhabitants of Jannah will respond, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam, tabarakta ya dal jalal wal ikram. And then he will say, Ayna ibad al ladheena ata'uni bil ghaybi wa lam yarawni. He will call out. This is the, this is the banner we want to be able to respond to. Where are those servants of mine, those slaves of mine, who used to worship me and obey me, even though they did not see me. And these are the ones who Allah will get to reveal, or who Allah will reveal His face to. So all of this sounds amazing. And it should be something that we go after. It should be something we desire. It should be our everyday goal. Not just to go and make a living and make a money and this and that. Yet still many of us choose not to strive for Jannah. And we have sadly become distracted, absorbed in this dunya, and lost sight of our purpose. كَمَا قَالَ اللَّهُ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لَيَعْبُدُونَ The purpose of my creation, of your creation, the purpose of the creation of the jinn and all of the humans was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wasn't here, I'm going to give you a worldly life to enjoy and then I'll bring you to Jannah automatically. This is not what it was for. It was to worship our Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala and our main goal should be the pleasure of Allah and subsequently Jannah. Allah said, بَلْ تُؤْثِرُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبَقَى No, but you prefer the life of this world. This is what mankind has tended to, to prefer the life of this world, while the hereafter is better and that which remains. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, indeed, we all know, and we can say without a doubt that the Akhirah is better for us. We need to use our time, though, in this dunya to work for it. So why do we continue to prioritize this dunya, this life, this worldly life, which on the day of resurrection again will seem like it was just an afternoon length of time, no matter how long you live. Why do we prioritize this dunya over Jannah? Because maybe it's to be cool. But how dumb would that be? How dumb would it be to lose Jannah because of love? How dumb would it be to lose Jannah because of money? How dumb would it be to lose Jannah because of a game? How dumb would it be to lose Jannah because of one's desires? How, so, how dumb would it be to lose Jannah because of a fix that you're seeking in this life? How dumb would it be? Maybe we, or we find some who neglect their prayers because they don't want to yani, look foolish in front of their friends or companions because none of them pray. And that's the friends or companions they chose. We have some who don't come to the masjid because they don't want to be labeled an extremist by their own Muslim family. This is the pathetic thought process in our heads nowadays. They don't want to look extreme, they don't want to be called extreme by their family, so they leave off what Allah commanded them. We have some who choose not to live according to the Qur'an and the Sunnah, fearing ridicule and poverty. So much so, that they will remove their lihya, not crop their pants above their ankles, not wear a kufi, not wear a thobe in public, all of these things. And you may think these are trivial, they're not when you're looking at the big picture. They're huge because they're from the sunnah of the best of mankind, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we have some who fall into that. We have some 
who do not wear the hijab or the jilbab because it's out of style. It's out of fashion. We're in 2022, the 21st century. This was for them in the old days, wal-ayadu billah. And you have some in the Muslim world who wear the hijab because it is the style in the country they're living in. We have some who spend hours listening to music, staring at magazines, staring at their phone, filled with haram pictures, haram content. That may be one thing if they felt remorse for doing it, or if their conscience was even questioning what they're doing, but they ain't even thinking that way. There's no thought process towards that. And the social media tidal wave reeks of shaitan. That's his drug right now, and he's making everybody addicted with it. This is what we are facing with. Maybe we choose this dunya over the akhirah because we're too busy, we have no time. Our Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba, they were busy. And they had people coming out against them in droves. Yet they never fell short in their duties of worship and remembering Allah. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ اَخْتَنَمْ خَمْسَ قَبْلَ خَمْسَ He said, benefit from, take advantage of five things before five. قَالَ شَبَابَكَ قَبْلَ هَرَمِكْ Your youth before your old age. وَسِحَّتَكَ قَبْلَ سَقَمِكْ And your health before your um, illness. وَغَنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقَرِكْ And your wealth before your poverty. وَفَرَاغَكَ قَبْلَ شُغْلِكْ And your free time before you get busy and you don't have free time. وَحَيَاتَكَ قَبْلَ مَوْتِكْ And your life before your death. To value and take advantage of these. That free time you have when you can do good. The health you have when you can do good. The, free, the, the youth you have when you can do good. The life you have before death meets you and you can't do no more good. Right? Doing all these things at those times. Take benefit and advantage of them. If you find yourself constantly prioritizing the dunya over the akhirah, strike a balance. And this should be our intention from now to work towards and to and then make firm while we're in the month of Ramadan, if not before it. Alhamdulillah, making that niyyah is the first step. If you're still breathing, if the sun hasn't risen in the west, you still have time to repent to Allah, to ask Allah for forgiveness, to make yourself Live according to the Qur'an and the Sunnah bi idnillahi ta'ala. So what are we waiting for? Remember Jannah isn't one week or a hundred years, it is forever. Eternity, khalidina fiha, forever and ever, without ever end, without ever ending. And unlimited pleasure, so strive now for this. وَجُوهٌ يَوْمَ إِذِ النَّاعِمَا لِسَعْيِهَا رَاضِيَةً Other faces that day, that the resurrection will be happy, they will be pleased on account of the effort they did in this world. But if you didn't put in the effort for Allah, if you didn't put in the effort for your deen, then how will you be safe on that day of resurrection? The ones who will be safe are the ones who put it forth. They will be pleased, relaxed, comfortable that day because of the effort and the work they did while they were on this earth. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ما dear brothers and sisters in Islam we're on the doorsteps 22 some days 20 days 21 days till Ramadan we have to prepare and we're already late because the companions used to do it for five months and here we are two weeks but we can still do it. And one area is this prioritization of what you do in your life. Prioritize the next life. It doesn't mean here you have to be a hermit. Allah didn't ask us to spend 24 hours in the masjid. But we were guided in a way to live our life so that it was pleasing to Allah, to earn the mercy of Allah, to make it to Jannah, to be with Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and see His face instead of destroying ourselves and ending in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means that indeed Allah will not change the condition of a people until they change what is in themselves. If you're upon good and doing good, then Allah will not take away that good from you. But if you're doing evil, if you're doing sin, and you're hoping that Allah will just give you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or whatever you want, then Allah will not change the condition you're in until you change what is in yourself. And this means returning back to Allah and to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi 
وَتَمَنَّا عَلَى الله. This hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, the wise man, alright, I don't care how many degrees you got up on that wall, I don't care how many doctorates and PhDs you got, how many, uh, whatever the letters, suffixes, or whatever comes after your name, it doesn't mean nothing. The wise man or woman, the wise person, is the one who calls himself to account and refrains from doing evil deeds. They call themselves to account. They'll look at themselves in the mirror and say, how could you dare sin against Allah? What were you thinking when you did such and such? They call themselves to account. They warn themselves. And they prepare by doing deeds that are beneficial to them after their death. But the foolish one, the foolish one, no matter how smart he may be to the people, the foolish one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who subdues himself to his temptations and his desires. And he seeks from Allah the fulfillment of those desires. He's not asking Allah, help me stop doing this sin because I truly can't stop it. He's asking Allah to make easy the path for him to fulfill those desires and those temptations and those lusts and those sins. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he said, حَوَّلْتُ أَنْ أَجْمَعَ بَيْنَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ he said, I tried to uh, reconcile between this world and the next life. What should I do with them? With, with, and he said, I couldn't do so. So I left this world and I focused all of my life and energy on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تزول قدم ابن آدم يوم القيامة من عند ربه حتى يسأل عن خمس عن عمره فيما أفناه وعن شبابه فيما أبلاه وعن ماله من أين اكتسبه وفيما أنفقه وماذا عمل فيما علم This hadith which is sahih لغيره as uh, graded by Shaykh al-Albani رحمه الله The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said the feet of the son of Adam will not move from before his Lord on the day of judgment When Allah questions you you will not move from before him until you are asked about five things You're going to be asked about your life and how you lived it what did you do for your deen? What did you do for Islam? What did you do for your soul? What did you do for your family? In terms of nurturing this Islam, you will be asked about your life and what you did with it. You will be asked about your youth. How did you spend it? And let's get it out of our head that youth is under 40 or whatever it is. Nowadays, youth is the state of living, how you, how you move. All right, you've got some seven-year-olds who's youth, who, who are youthful in their ways. What did you do with your youth, your youth when you were able when you were capable, when you had less responsibility, you had the time to serve Allah and His messengers, uh, to serve Allah and fulfill the sunnah of His messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will be asked about your wealth. Not just how you spent it, you're going to be asked how you got it. Did you, get, how, did you get that wealth you had by haram, by doing haram things, right? And then how did you spend your money? You will be asked about that. How did you spend your wealth? What did you put your money into? Did you put it into haram, ways to grow your wealth that were haram and the likes of these matters to fulfill your desires? Or did you put them, yani, serving your family, enjoying a nice car, a nice home? This is halal. Don't get me wrong. But there's definitely something called extravagance. And then mubaddireen kanu akhwana shayateen. The ones who are wasteful and extravagant, they are the brothers of shaitan. And the fifth question that you'll be asked without your feet moving until you're asked and answering for it, is what you did with what knowledge you were given. What you did, and Allahu Alam, what we may even be questioned here is, you had the chance for knowledge, and you didn't go to it. You had the halakas being provided. You had the authentic knowledge at your disposal. You had 30 bucks to buy a wal marjan, the, the authentic hadith between Bukhari and Muslim that's in the social hall. Some other good authentic books if you want to purchase them. And you chose, nah, I'm going to put my money somewhere else. This is what will happen. So maybe we're not ready to go to that next level. To be callers to the deen of Allah. To help show the truth about the Muslims. But the question is, will we be held accountable for it? Because Allah knows we're capable. Or He knows that we have the means of being capable. He has given us the capability. He has given us the money. He has given us the health. He has given us the energy. But we keep spending it on this dunya. Don't learn things the hard way, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And I advise myself, do not learn the hard way. Do not learn the hard way. Ask yourself when you say yes or no to something. There's a halakha. Let's say there's going to be a halakha in the evening. Or there will be yani, coming to Isha. Forget the halakha. Just coming to Salat al-Isha. 
Ask yourself these questions to realize whether you participate or not. If there was money in it for me, would I go? If there was food there, would I go? If there was a chance for me to win a prize, would I go? If it were for school or to, to get a better grade for the students here, alhamdulillah, would I go? If it were to get, get me a vacation or earn a vacation, would I go? Because these are the things that Allah and His Messenger told us we would do these things of goodness if there was a reward in this dunya for us waiting for us at the end of that road. So we would do anything for our banks to show a higher balance. For us to get some dunya enjoyment or entertainment to يعني, show the pride we have for the country we're from. But what will you do for Islam? What have you done for Islam? What have you done for Allah? What will you do for Allah? That's really the true question we have. There was a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that came in, uh, in a story. I'm just going to read the hadith portion. ta'ala. It came and he said, يعني, when some of the companions, they, the Ansar, they hung around when Abu Ubaidah came back, radiallahu anhu, with some of the spoils of war because they knew that they would have a share in it. So the Messenger of Allah ﷺ saw them at Fajr. And they followed him after he got up and he was leaving. So the Prophet ﷺ, he knew, so he smiled at them. And he said, I think you've heard that Abu Ubaidah has brought something from Bahrain. They said, yes, O Messenger of Allah Wasallam." So this is what he said. أَبْشِرُوا وَأَمِّلُوا مَا, وأملوا ما يسركم فوالله ما, 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 ما الفقر أخشى عليكم ولكن أخشى عليكم أن تبسط الدنيا عليكم كما يبسط على ما من كان قبلكم فتنافسوها كما تنافسوها فتهلككم كما أهلكتهم This authentic hadith in Ibn Majah, the Prophet ﷺ, he said to them, be of good cheer, be happy, okay, there's something good for you. And hope for that which will make you happy. By Allah, I do not fear poverty for you, rather I fear that you will enjoy ease. And you will enjoy the increases that you have, the plentifulness of the provisions you've been given. And if this ain't the ummah today, basking in all the wealth, all the comfort, all the blessings that Allah has given us, then I don't know what is. By Allah, I do not fear poverty for you, but I fear for you that you will enjoy ease and plentifulness with regards to provisions like those who came before you, and that you will compete one another. Ah, the Muslims take the, the banner on this one. All the competition, even between brother and brother, brother and sister, uncle and aunt, parents and children. That competition, for what? Who's going to do more good deeds to Allah? No, for this dunya. He said, and that you will compete with one another as they did, but you're going to be destroyed as they were. That's the end result of competing for these things. So let us, as we get towards Ramadan, may Allah allow us to see it, let us work towards... Let us work towards prioritizing Allah and this deen and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa above, above our culture, above what we were taught, if it is contradictory to the Qur'an and the sunnah, above this dunya and all the facades that we see that, it provide, that it's going to provide to you if you follow this path or that path. Prioritize Allah and Islam above this life. You will be successful in both. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والأحياء منهم والأموات إنك أنت السميع القريب المجيب الدعوات يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبا على دينك سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون وسلاما على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين